if the middle of your story has given you trouble, you need to learn about pinch points. Today I'm going to explain what they are and how you can use them. What's up guys, my name is Brandon McNulty, I'm a writer, I'm the author of Bad Parts, and welcome to my writing channel. Today I want to talk about the subject of pinch points. And what these are, they are two plot points, two moments that happen in the middle of your story, usually around the 38% mark and the 62% mark. And what they do, they raise the stakes a little bit and they remind us that the villain is still a threat. Because sometimes when you're right in the middle of your story, your heroes are, you know, they're, they're solving problems, they're, they're getting to know each other, get, they're getting into conflict with the supporting cast, and there's a lot of things going on. And it can be tempting to just kind of push the villain to the side until you really need them. But what you really have to do, you have to get them involved in the middle of the second quarter and also in the middle of the third quarter. Now, one important thing to know about pinch points is that they should not be major setbacks or they should not involve the deaths of major characters. For instance, if you're going to kill off like a minor character at one of these points, that's okay, but you don't want to be wiping out your main cast or anything like that. For instance, in the movie Terminator, pinch point one is when Arnold Schwarzenegger's character finally catches up with Sarah Connor at the nightclub and he starts shooting up the place. And if you notice, no major characters are killed off in this scene. This is strictly just a moment where we get to see what Arnold is capable of in this scenario. And then pinch point two in the Terminator is when Arnold busts into the police station, he kills a bunch of officers, he tries to get after Sarah Connor, but she escapes again. There are no major deaths here. These are just reminders that the villain is capable of coming after our heroes and killing them. Now, one other important thing to know is that pinch point one typically foreshadows future conflicts in your story, whether it be pinch point two, the all is lost moment, or the final confrontation. For instance, in The Dark Knight, pinch point one occurs when the Joker crashes Harvey Dent's fundraiser. And of course, this scene ends with the Joker throwing Rachel Dawes out the window and Batman has to save her. Now, later on in the story, pinch point two occurs when the Joker is being interrogated and he reveals to Batman that he's captured both Rachel and Harvey Dent and that Batman can only save one of them. Shortly after this, Batman goes after Rachel. He tries to save her, but instead he's given false information and he ends up saving Harvey. And then, of course, Rachel dies. Now, if we look back at pinch point one, this was all foreshadowed when the Joker threw Rachel out the window. He put her in danger there, then later on he puts her in danger once again. Another movie that uses Pinch Point One to foreshadow future conflicts is Jurassic Park. And Pinch Point One in this movie occurs when the tropical storm starts getting out of hand and the tour has to be called back. Now the tropical storm causes more problems at Pinch Point Two when it forces Dennis Nedry to leave his vehicle and eventually get killed by the Dilophosaurus. And Dennis Nedry is of course the only guy in the park who knows how to run the software in order to help maintain control over the park and the dinosaurs. And looking back at Pinch Point One, this is an instance where the tropical storm, aka nature, starts causing problems. It happens again at Pinch Point Two, and of course the dinosaurs in this story represent nature, and they are causing problems up until the very end of the story. So the key thing to remember with Pinch Points is that they should raise the stakes, they should remind us that the villain is a threat, and if you can, also see if you can have that first Pinch Point foreshadow future events. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, do you tend to forget about your villain when writing the middle of your story? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to check out my other videos. Hit the like and subscribe buttons for me. Share this video with a friend if you don't mind. Pick up a copy of Bad Parts if you haven't already. And as always, remember to keep on writing.